Hello fellow goblins and welcome back to Squeeze Bazaar, the channel where we talk about Magic the Gathering. Uh, today we created a little guide in case you've been maybe playing on Magic the Gathering Arena or maybe had the intention to go play the pre-release next weekend at your local game store. Because at this point all the cards have been revealed and so uh, Squee and me, we prepared you guys a little guide to maybe help you out if you are maybe late or want to catch up real quick on what's out there right now, what the archetypes are. So. Without further ado, Squee, let's go looking at what the um, the main new mechanics are in uh, in this new set. So uh, the mechanic, the first one that we'll be seeing is the venture into the dungeons. So basically, there are three different types of dungeons. So and cards that are going to say, you know, when this card uh, attacks or whatever, you can uh, venture into the dungeon. So I guess you get a choice of these three uh, dungeons. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you got a more aggro dungeon. You got a, a you know, a more um, goblin token, uh, treasure token um, uh, dungeon. And then you got a mage uh, kind of dungeon where you scry a lot and uh, maybe create some, gain some cards. So which uh, venture dungeons are the best? Uh, that's, I guess, depending on your tactics. So um, here are typical cards that can let you in uh, adventure into the dragon, for example, like Pre Precipitous Drop. This is a card to... Uh, the squeam you're a big fan of. Uh, so when it enters, you just basically venture into the dungeon. Again, uh, Barrowin of Clan uh, Undur, same thing. He enters, you get to venture, so make your way through those little paths that you saw in uh, the previous images. Just like the Planeswalker, same thing. A plus one ability lets you ven venture. So yeah, really cool new mechanic. We're, I'm going to be uh, excited to see what this gives in game. So um, Without, uh, we got other things that there's not just venture into the dungeons. There's other new mechanics that are uh, coming in with this set. So the other one, I think it's the uh, the dice roll mechanic, right? Uh, so this is basically uh, cards that when uh, either they enter the battlefield or you trigger them, they will ask you to roll a 20 die. And depending on your results, the uh, card will produce um, uh, different kinds of, um, of results. So yeah. Um, there's another third mechanic, I think, uh, which are, it's not really a mechanic, but basically the classes, right? Which are the old version of sagas, but I think uh, you have to pay if you want to level up and uh, otherwise they stay at their first, uh, stages. So you got almost, uh, a class, uh, card for every color. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool, pretty powerful. We'll, we'll see if they work with, uh, with the rest of the cards we'll be showing you here today so without further ado let's hit right uh, the archetypes the types of color cards that uh, which ones go best together the first one we got today is going to be green blue uh good stuff so green blue uh really looking just to you know get the mana quick uh to, to get some bigger spells out faster than than the opponent so you got some uh so a one drop that lets you go looking for a forest uh an enchantment that lets you add mana to get there faster or even evolving wilds to filter if you need to splash a third color for a bomb rare, which Simic is probably one of the better colors to do uh, a splash for, and then or just ramp up into big creatures like the uh, Hill Giant over there in the end. Um, you also got, uh, for the uncommon cards, that can help them out, the dungeon map. Uh, also gives you a mana, lets you venture in the dragon if you got nothing else to do with your mana. Uh, Gretchen, this is uh, a, good, a good blocker in the beginning, and uh, later on, can uh, let you start drawing cards if you're a bit empty with uh, or free mana to um, to delve in, uh, or just like I said earlier, ramp quickly into a, a big green dragon or uh, just sudden insights, which gives you a lot of uh, a card draw, right? And uh, the big rares that could help you out are a Circle of Dreams Druid, so adding a, a forest for each creature you control, so that can give you a whole lot of mana real quick. Then we got uh, Volo Guide to Monsters. So he will let you copy any creature you create as long as it doesn't uh, cop is, as long as it's not the same creature type as a creature that's already on the board. Like in the case of this image right here, we got one elf druid, one frog horror, and one dinosaur, making us three different types of creatures. So this would all work really, really well uh, together. So that's for the green blue, uh, Simic good stuff. Uh, after we got uh, the black green sacrifice, so the Golgari colors. So here it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You're probably gonna get a payoff every time a creature dies or maybe a creature you control dies. Uh, ways to do this can be uh, different. As you can see, again, the Neverwinter Dryad, you can sacrifice it for two mana, starting the trigger of uh, an, a creature dying or just a card like Deadly Dispute, asking you to, uh, as an additional uh, cost, to sacrifice an artifact or a creature in order to get some bonuses uh, instead. 
So, um, yeah, you have other cards like uh, the uh, Clattering Skeletons that doesn't mind dying, for example, so it can go venture into the dungeon. And, or the Bullet, <laughs> at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died, well, it gets a plus one, plus one towner. So, again, uh, way the way you, you kill your own creatures or kill your opponent's creatures, and you'll be getting some payouts uh, in one way or another. So, here we got the Warlock class. So, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses a life. So, that's one way to trigger. We got the Grim Wanderer, which I believe is a really cool card. For two mana, it's a 5-3 with flash, but you can only cast it if a creature died this turn. So I think with little work, it's if you're in the right deck, it's actually pretty easy to do. And with flash, you can cast them on the right moment, even on your opponent's turn. So a really, really cool card here, this uh, Grim uh, Grim Wanderer. So uh, we got Shestra, uh, who also you know has all kinds of shenanigans every time a creature dies, or that purple worm in the back. That basically says that it will cost you two mana cheaper if a creature died this turn, giving you a, a large advantage on the creature size early in the game. So that's for the, the uncommons. Then we got the in the rares, if you really get a good pull, like uh, Lult, the Spider Queen, who has a passive ability that says whenever a creature you control dies, put a loyalty counter on Lult. That makes making, if you got a lot of creatures that you can kill yourself, you can make her go up to eight as fast as possible and just get that big emblem going and basically win that game. Uh, we got White who uh, whenever he wins a battle, basically, you get to create a black uh, zombie token, which is pretty cool. Uh, Ebon Death, which you can play from your graveyard if a creature died this turn. Uh, and the Skeletal Swarming that just starts creating tokens for you all over the place. I think that thing is insane. So yeah, that's for the black, green, uh, sacrifice uh, colors. What do we got next, Gui? Oh, we got green, white, life gain, and counters. Basically, the Celestia colors, it's pretty straightforward. You want to be gaining life as soon as possible, and when you do, be getting triggers and bonuses for doing so. So you got the Steedfast Paladin that comes in pretty early, and he's got Life Link, and then you got the Celestial Unicorn that says whenever you got a life gain, you get to make him bigger, basically. So very good uh, comboing uh, when you see it turn two, turn three. Uh, even the uh, Priest of the Ancient Lord uh, gains a life and draws a card. Really, really cool. Commons in the white green. Uh, counter life gain uh, meta so you got the monk of the open hand just a solid good one drop that lets you put a counter whenever you cast a second spell the druid class gives you uh, a life whenever you cast a land uh, and then the uh, trollasara <laughs> the moon dancer gets counters and gets to scry every time you gain life and then you have the prosperous innkeeper basically doing the same giving you a life every time a creature enters the battlefield under your control so there you go and then you got some rares uh, that go well with this uh, drizz do urden Double Strike, good creature, bomb rare. And the Frog Hemot, Trample Haste. Uh, so because basically when he attacks and gets through, uh, if um, it's a creature you exiled with him, then uh, he'll be getting bigger. But if it's a land and you gain life, again, triggering that ability to spawn other uh, abilities on other cards. So yeah, Green White has uh, some cool stuff going for it also. What's, uh, what's next, Squee? What we got? We got Red White Equipment. Okay, so this is uh, Boros Colors. Also, I think these are usually the aggro type decks, really looking for small creatures with some equipments to try and get them bigger, pumped up, and hit for a lot of damage. So you can see you got some equipment cards like the Dueling uh, Rapier and the Armory Veteran, and seeing that going together, they give themselves a bonus. Uh, same with the Plus Two Mace or the Dwarf Wolf Champion. They uh, are really good, good creatures to equip your equipments on. Uh, that's for the commons, but I guess you got some really good uncommons too, like the Goblin Morning Star. And that's a good one, right? We get, gets trample, and you got uh, get to roll some dice and hopefully create some more uh, goblin tokens. So cool card. Uh, the ingenious smith was also really really good. Entering, letting you look for equipment, and whenever you cast equipment, it gets bigger. I think that's a really good card. Uh, you got the plate armor. Again, another equipment that is just uh, you know lots of bonus. Gets a ward plus three plus three, making your creature bigger. And then you got Brunor. The battle hammer and this i think this guy is really powerful so each creature that's equipped gets plus two plus zero and you can equip all your equipments for zero that's that's really good stuff so what we got in uh in the rares for this uh oh fighter class okay so they got a rare kind of saga letting you go look for equipment oswald fiddlebender guess same thing lets you go looking for equipment in your library dancing sword and icing that frost tyrant which basically when it dies leaves you with an equipment so yeah, cool cards here. There's a, a lot of stuff going on in the Boros colored uh, this set. All right, what we got next, Gui? White Blue Venture. Ranger's Hawk. Okay, what White Blue Venture is going to do? Sorry about that. Um, 
I guess we've seen it before. They're going to focus mainly on trying to venture as much into Dragon to try and get as much value out of that as possible. So they got some early one drops, I guess, to stabilize uh, their board, like this Ranger's Hark with the Secret Door, uh, basically letting you venture into Dungeon if you got enough mana later on in the game. You got Bardagate, lets you counter spells and venture into Dragon while you're doing it. I think that's also going to be massively played uh, for blue decks who like to control uh, anything that's going on, especially in these pair of uh, colors. And then the Planner Ally basically ventures whenever it attacks. Really good card. Uh, so the uncommons, we got Hama Pashar. So this one is really cool. If you would trigger a venture ability, you'd do it, you'd do it a second time. So that's really cool. You get to, to go faster through the dungeons and hope you get there out sooner and complete them faster. So uh, Fly, that's a really good card. For one mana, gives your creature flying, and whenever that creature does damage, you get to venture into the dr dungeon. So Again, giving your creature evasiveness to be able to go venture, it's really uh, a pretty good card for one mana, I'd say. Then you have the uh, Eccentric uh, Apprentice, which triggers every time it enters the battlefield. Uh, and the Cloister Gargoyle doing the same thing, give, even gets flying and plus three plus zero if you've completed a dungeon. So White Blue has a lot of cool cards also uh, going for them. So the good uh, rares here are... Yeah, UN Team of License. So we've seen this card before. This card actually fits in any a deck that's playing blue it's it, it's pretty pretty good huh uh it's can it can be unblockable and it ventures into the dungeon then we got nadar the selfless paladin which we believe is probably one of the the best white rares uh in the set uh a three three for three vigilance when it enters you get to venture and when it attacks you get to venture and all your other creatures get plus one plus one if you've completed a dungeon already so very very powerful card and then the teleportation circle uh, we chose this one because the uh, there's so many entering the battlefield triggers for venturing that we thought being able to do it an extra time at the end of turn could always be beneficial. So yeah, cool cards for white blue venture. I gotta admit, I actually I like it. I think it's a cool one. Uh, what else we got? Mm, blue black unblockable venture. Okay, so these are the Demir colors, the rogues basically. Uh, they're really known, I guess, in the uh, in the format. Uh, so basically they have ways of getting through uh, defense basically and getting bonus for hitting their their opponents so you example here is like you come to a river you can find a crossing and give your creature unblockable making it go through the defense again precipitous drop always good card removal and lets you venture and then uh, uang t fang blade whenever it does damage gets a venture the same for the shortcut c cutter so um basically yeah they're just trying to be unblockable so they can venture by hitting their opponents so again in the uncommons we got fly again yeah, giving flying is always a good way to get past the defense and then being able to, uh, to to venture into dungeons on top of that is always just bonus for one mana lots of good stuff the guild thief being able to make himself unblockable if you got enough mana to to, to spend the lightfoot rogue same thing and the uh, criddle uh, of Baldur's gate so this lets you make any creature you want unblockable for two mana so really good Synergy going on with the rogues as usual for for not a lot of mana if you can see it's a, lots of cheap cards one two mana max uh, a Lot of things. So yeah in the the rares you got UNT license again. You got uh, rogue class Grazilax which makes I think this is probably if you are running this deck and you have that rare uh, You are probably gonna win a lot of games if you can uh, pilot that one well and uh, the Westgate regions that just basically keeps get, getting bigger every time uh, he uh, he hits the opponent so that's also a pretty cool uh, archetype, I gotta admit. I might, might wanna try that one out too. So what else you got, Squee? Uh, black, red treasures, okay. So um, yeah, the treasure tokens are definitely a thing uh, in this set. And there's actually a whole archetype that wants to maximize, I guess, on producing them and using the mana that these uh, treasure tokens uh, can give you. So uh, looking at the first card here, Hired uh, Hexblade, if you paid it with a uh, treasure token, then you get to draw a card and uh, lose a life uh, as you play it, for example. So that's actually a good benefit for a 2-2 as a common. I think it's a, actually a pretty cool card. Uh, Deadly Dispute, if you just want to sacrifice your creatures to get bonus, then you have uh, you know removal that lets you uh, create tokens uh, for the in red or in black. That's pretty cool. So Grim Bounty is a pretty cool card. Uh, what do we got in Uncommon? So power will again removal black always has some really strong removal in uh, in sets It's usually black that gets to destroy all the creatures uh, Kalein the reclusive painter. So uh, When it enters you create a, a treasure token 
And other creatures uh, you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one on them for each mana from a treasure spent to cast them. So again, you get bonus every time you are using your tokens that you created to cast uh, spells. You got the skull pearl, skull port merchant. Sorry, that gives you uh, again a token when it enters, or you can just start sacrificing tokens to draw cards. And the rust monster. Letting you sacrifice an artifact to give it plus two plus zero. So if it has no defense, you can just swap in all those uh, artifacts and go in for a whole lot of damage. So yeah, cool cards. And again, the curve is still pretty low. Gotta admit, I'm interested. Uh, what are the rares for this? Uh, Forsworn Paladin. Okay, a one drop menace. Again, you get to create treasure tokens and probably use those tokens after to gain a extra abilities xorn that says you just basically create an extra token every time you do create a token really cool card there for three mana and then uh, cards like inferno of the star mounts or even tiamat because it doesn't matter that it's five colors if you got all the tokens it's not going to be a problem to cast that creature so uh or just the uh, inferno of star mounts basically you can uh dump all your mana into the the pump and hopefully try and make 20 damage if you can make it it'd be a cool cool test <laughs> okay what's next week uh, red and green pack tactics. Okay, this is one of the newer uh, uh, mechanics we've been seeing um, with this set. So basically, you get a bonus if when you attack, you can accumulate the power of six with your uh, with your creatures. So um, every time you get that magical number six, you're probably going to be getting a bonus for doing so. For in the case of the hog goblin here, he'll gain first strike if you reach that number. For the uh, gnoll hunter, he'll get a plus one plus encounter. And then you got cards like the bull strength that can just give your creatures a bit more juice to hit that magic number six to get the the um, the pack tactics uh, going uh, same for that dire wolf prowler that can pump itself to get a little bit bigger just to make sure you can get in there for the right number and then uh in the young commons is probably where you're gonna get some more payoffs see uh battle gry goblin oh that's a cool card um so if you hit the magic number six here you'll be creating a red red one one red goblin that's attacking with them really cool then you got um well, that's a that's a complicated name there. Targnar. <laughs> uh, what does he do when you get uh, this number six? Well, all your creatures get plus one plus zero till the end of turn. So that's also pretty cool. And you can double his power. Uh, Intrepid Outlander. Uh, he lets you venture into the dungeon if you hit the magical number six. And then uh, you see a pair of goblins. Again, a little wink from us here at Squeeze Bazaar. Either you can pump your team or just create uh, extra tokens uh, to get your team bigger. Yep. Uh, what's for the rares so the werewolf pack leader this guy lets you draw cards if you hit that magic number six the minion lets you uh go search for dragons uh if and enters the battlefield if you hit that number six again a really cool uh mechanic actually to, to, to all these things that trigger when you hit that number six every time you attack and then uh good old uncle bandit lord here making all the other goblins bigger making it again easier to hit that number and then that planeswalker in the end, which uh, has an emblem that says you get an additional uh, attack phase, doubling, making you double the uh, pack tactics trigger. So pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool colors, Gruel. Got some stuff going, these pack tactics. It's pretty cool. What's next, Squee? Blue, red, dice. Yeah. So this is actually going to be, a, this has got to be the crazier uh, type of uh, archetype where basically luck is going to depend uh, if you're rolling well or not on your evening. Uh, so basically every card is going to say, uh, to, to roll a 20 dice, uh, in the case you got the arcane investor here, if you pay, you can roll a dice, start drawing cards, the, uh, contact other plane lets you draw two cards. I think that's a really good, uh, common right there, uh, for, th for four mana, you're basically going to be, uh, drawing two cards. And if you hit that magic number 20, if you're really lucky, you can draw up to three cards at instant speed. Uh, the hoarding ogre. When he attacks, you can roll dice and you can start creating treasure tokens. Always a good bonus. And some swarming goblins. That's some family over there. Uh, they, uh, well, if, when, they, uh, when they enter the battlefield, you can roll dice and start creating uh, some more goblins, making the family bigger as always. So in the uncommon, we got the barbarian class. So this we thought was a really cool card. Uh, we like that first clause. If you would roll one die, uh, instead roll that one plus that many die plus one and ignore the lowest roll. That's basically giving you two dual, uh, right. Oh boy, I got it all mixed up here. Giving you two right dice rolls every time you got one to throw. And then you got power of persuasion. That's um, a bounce, basically. Pretty good. Uh, Feywild Trickster, making you uh, create some uh, blue fairy dragons. And then we got Ferida, that basically uh, 
gets bigger, it gets flying and menace, and lets you draw a card um, when um, you roll dice that are over 10. Cool card there, that, uh, that uncommon. In the rares, we got Delina. So this, uh, what does she do? Okay, yeah. She uh, creates copies of attacking creatures. You got the treasure chest. Uh, I like this card. I got, it's got some cool flavor, letting you uh, draw a lot of cards or create tokens, really cool. The deck of many things. Again, you pay two, roll a dice and start some shenanigans. And in the end, if you got a lot of mana, you got the wizard spell book that lets you, you know, start rolling dice all over the place. So this is definitely the archetype for the dice rollers. Okay, is that it or is there something else? Oh, yeah, white black venture. Okay, so same uh, principle as uh, another archetype. I think it was white white blue uh basically you're trying to venture as much as you can into the dragon whether it be by returning creatures to your uh, to your hand from your graveyard removing them or uh, having creatures attack like the planar ally again uh, letting you venture so uh, yeah cool uh, common cards what does it got anything special in the uncommon a dungeon crawler yeah the key knight century that's a pretty cool sideboard card that we wanted to show uh, the cloister cloister gargoyle again and barwin clan of undur basically all value by venturing into the dungeons. Okay, what are the rares for this? Uh, okay, oh, I like this first card here, Triumphant Adventurer. Uh, we saw him last week in our in our episode, so as long as it's your turn, uh, he has first strike, and he's got death touch, so I don't think he's gonna get blocked very often. And when he attacks, you venture into the dungeon. So yeah, and then again, Nadar, make you venture all over the place. A Guardian of Fate, just because we believe it's a pretty Powerful card, being able to phase out a flash out of nowhere. Uh, and uh, a Sererak, uh, which then starts giving you bonuses if you've already completed a, a dungeon. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's uh, the, the, the those are the archetypes that we went over. So I hope uh, you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any comments you want to leave down below or your impressions, maybe there are cards we missed out, uh, feel free uh, to, to, to say so in the comments. So you can leave us a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on our next episode. Bye-bye.